Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about respiratory system for class 11. So in today's topic, I'm going to talk about what is difference between breathing and respiration and what are the different parts of the respiratory system and what are the functions of the respiratory system and in detail about the organs of the respiratory system. So let's begin. So first, what is the difference between breathing and respiration? So what do you think is the difference? So breathing means you take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide. So there is exchange of gases between the atmosphere and you, okay? So that is breathing. So there is exchange of gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide exchanges happening. Whereas respiration, what happens is before I explain about respiration, I, I want you to make sure I want to make sure that you guys see my digestion video because it's important and it's related. And what happens in respiration is suppose when you eat food, right? Food is a bigger molecule. It is it what happens is it is broken down into simpler molecules, and then we get glucose from the food. Okay. Now, what does oxygen do is it reacts with the glucose that is C6H12O6 and gives ATP and carbon dioxide. So this ATP is very important because ATP is the one that gives us energy to do work. Okay, so... Um, Breathing is a process where there is exchange of gases and respiration is a process where oxygen breaks down glucose to give energy in the form of ATP, also known as adenosine triphosphate. Okay, so where is breathing happening? It is first starting with the nose, then goes into your nostrils, nasal cavity, then pharynx, then larynx, then comes the trachea and then comes the lungs. Okay, whereas respiration takes place in the mitochondria of the cell okay that is where the ATP is formed that is the reason why mitochondria is called as powerhouse of the cell because it is here where the main energy is getting derived so that's the reason mitochondria is called powerhouse of the cell and for this process to occur there are a lot of enzymes that play an important role whereas here enzymes do not play an important role because there is no enzymes involved Okay, and breathing is a voluntary process and respiration is an involuntary process. Okay, now is breathing an active process or is respiration an active process? Actually, both are active process because what is active process where muscles are used and, you know, energy is important. So for you to breathe, so you're using your muscles, you need energy. Right, so breathing is also an active process and respiration, that is where ATP is being formed. So definitely it's an active process. So this is about the differences between breathing and respiration. I hope you're clear. So let's see your NCRT um, book and let's see if we have covered the main things. So breathing, we studied that it is a process of inhaling oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide. Whereas respiration, it is the process where the uh, food is first broken down into glucose in the digestive system and then the oxygen reacts with this glucose to give ATP and it occurs in the mitochondria. Okay, breathing, no enzymes are involved and whereas in respiration, enzymes are involved, breathing is a voluntary inaction and respiration is involuntary. Okay, so let me just clear this. Now coming to the next so before I begin, I just want to give a quick recap, okay? Breathing is a process where there is exchange of gases, oxygen is going in, carbon dioxide is coming out, and respiration is a process where oxygen and glucose act, and glucose is broken down into ATP, which is the, gives the energy to do the work, okay? Now coming to how are the respiratory system divided? So let me draw it here for you. So respiratory system is divided into two parts. One is the conducting zone and another one is the respiratory zone. Okay, one is conducting zone and another one is the respiratory zone. So what happens in the conductive zone where there is exchange of gases? So what all are involved is first, it starts with nostrils. Okay, 
So first, let me explain you and then I'll write it. It starts with nostrils, goes into nasal cavity, external nasal cavity, internal nasal cavity. Then it goes into pharynx. Then it goes into larynx or where your vocal cords, cords are situated. That is nothing but the voice box. Then the trachea is there where you can feel like ring-like structure. That is the trachea. And then it divides into primary bronchus, bronchi, then divides into secondary bronchus bronchi, tertiary bronchi, and finally divides into bronchioles, okay? And then we have alveoli. So respiratory zone is there is exchange of gases inside the lung between the grape-like alveoli and blood. So what is respiratory zone? Exchange of gases between the alveoli and blood, okay? That is the respiratory zone. And conducting zone is how the oxygen and carbon dioxide Oxygen is coming in, carbon dioxide is coming out. And what all are the structures involved? Nostrils, external nasal cavity. Then we have internal nasal cavity. Then we have the pharynx. Then we have the larynx. Then we have trachea. Then trachea divides into primary bronchi at fifth vertebral column, okay? Then we have primary bronchi. Then we have secondary bronchi. We have tertiary bronchi that divides into bronchioles. Okay. There is exchange between alveoli and the blood in the respiratory zone. Here we also have alveolar duct and alveolar sap that plays an important role. Okay. Now this is about the system. Here itself I will draw a picture so that you know. Okay, so I'm just drawing epiglottis and larynx over here. So epiglottis is situated above the glottis. So it acts as a protective layer. It acts like a cap. So if you remove the epiglottis, you can see the glottis. I'm talking the structure from here. Okay, then you have larynx or your voice box. Okay, this is epiglottis, which is covering the glottis. Then you have trachea. Trachea is nothing but your windpipe. Okay. So what is trachea? It is nothing but windpipe. Okay. Then you have ring-like structures. You have 16 to 20 rings. And the shape of the rings is C-shaped. And they are incomplete rings. They are not complete rings. They do not cover completely. They are incomplete rings. Okay. Then the type of cartilage is hyaline cartilage, okay? What is the type of cartilage? It is hyaline cartilage. And most important thing according to NCRT is the type of epithelium is pseudostratified epithelium. Okay, so this is about trachea. Now it divides into primary bronchi at fifth thoracic vertebral level okay now here it divides into right lung and the left lung okay and let me tell you something what happens is there are two fissures on the right lung here is the right lung here is the left lung in the left lung there is only one fissure so i told you there are so here i'm just drawing so that it's easy Okay. Yeah. So here there are two fissures, whereas here there is only one fissure. Then what happens in your right lung and left lung is if there are two fissures, it is divided into three parts. That is superior lobe, middle lobe and inferior lobe. On the left side, it is divided into just the superior lobe and inferior lobe. Okay. Now. I hope you're clear till here, okay? Your heart is situated on, heart is tilted on the left side, okay? And it is present in between the lungs in a space that is called as media stenum. okay? This is about the position of the heart. Now, this is the lung. Lung has a covering. The covering is called as pleura, okay? And it is covered by two layers, one is the internal layer and one is outer or external layer. 
Okay. So internal layer is called as visceral layer and external layer is called as parietal layer. Okay. So, and the space between it is nothing but pleural cavity. All right. So this is about what are the parts of respiratory system and a little bit about what a, there is a fissure. There are two fissures, so three lobes on the right side of the lung and two one fissure, so it is divided into two parts on the left side of the lung. Okay, now coming to functions of the respiratory system. So according to the NCRT, what are the three functions of respiratory system is it helps in humidification of air. Now, what is meant by humidification of air is it adds moisture to the air, okay? And it helps in regulation of body temperature. Now, what is meant by regulation of body temperature? So what happens is suppose it is cold outside, it's snowing outside. Then what happens if outside the temperature is dropping, your temperature doesn't drop, your temperature remains constant. So when it's cold and you try to um, puff out air, you can feel that your air is hot because it is hotter than the outer temperature. Same way in extreme uh, summer, what happens is when outside it's hot and you try to puff air, it will be a little cold. That's because your body temperature is always maintained. And filtration of air also can be seen. So what happens in filtration of the air? In the filtration of the air is happening because of the hair, situates, hair situated in the nostril. So hair is present in the nose because it helps in filtration of the dust particles. So that is all for today's class. So let me give you a quick recap. So we have in the first slide, we have studied the differences between breathing and respiration. We studied that breathing is nothing but exchange of gases, whereas respiration is oxygen acts on C6H12O6 and then it gives ATP. That is the process of respiration and breathing occurs starts from nose and then ends at lungs. And respiration is the process that occurs in the mitochondria. That is the reason why mitochondria is called powerhouse of the cell. Okay, both are the active process. Breathing is a, in, it is a voluntary process, whereas respiration is an involuntary process. And enzymes are involved in respiratory process, whereas enzymes are not involved in the breathing process. Now next we are studied the division that is uh, how the respiratory system is divided into conducting zone and respiratory zone. Conducting zone starts with nose, nostrils, nasal cavity and then pharynx, larynx, trachea divides into right lung and left lung. Okay then we have respiratory zone where there is exchange of gases between the alveoli and the blood. Now on the right side here below, you can see the diagram where epiglottis is covering the glottis. Then you have larynx or the voice box. Then you have trachea. Trachea is the ring-like structure or nothing but the windpipe. It has pseudo stratified epithelium, hyaline cartilage, C-shaped rings, and they're incomplete rings. There are 16 to 20 rings. Okay, and it is dividing into primary bronchi at fifth thoracic vertebral level into right lung and in left lung. In right lung, you see two fissures. In left lung, you see one fissure. In right lung, the two fissures divide the right lung into three parts. That is superior lobe, middle lobe, inferior lobe. And left lung, you can see that it is divided into two, superior and inferior lobe. Okay, and the lung... So this is the lung. It is covered internally by internal pleural membrane and outside also it has a layer. So inner, inner pleura is also known as visceral. Okay, and outside layer is parietal layer. And in between the two layers, you see that there is a cavity. Okay, that is nothing but pleural cavity. So today we have studied about breathing, respiration, what is the conducting zone, what is the respiratory zone, and also about the parts of the respiratory system. Okay, now coming to what does the NCRT say about the organs in the respiratory system. So let's start with nose or the nasal cavity here. What happens is the air is warm and moistened. 
That is what your NCRT textbook tells. Next, we have pharynx or throat. That is the passage that leads to trachea. Larynx is nothing but where your vocal cords are situated, also known as the voice box. Next, coming to trachea or windpipe, what happens? In the trachea is another point. It is made up of uh, pseudostratified epithelium, hyaline cartilage. It also has cilia for filtration. Okay, it has 16 to 20 rings, C-shaped incomplete rings. Now coming to bronchi, there are two branches at the end of each trachea leading to the lung. Here you can see leading to the lung. Okay, and then they end up terminally as bronchioles. Then we finally have alveoli, grape-like structures where there is exchange of gases happening. Now in tomorrow's class, we are going to study in detail about the process of respiration. So thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, you can leave in the comments below. I'll be very happy to answer the questions. And in case you have enjoyed today's video, please do like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to my channel. Thank you.